Birda, qui est chercheur euh, à l'Institut des sciences politiques haute sur à l'Université libre de Berlin. Euh, et il a comme titre « Blue Homeland and Turkish Politics in the Eastern Mediterranean ». Arabi Batan et la politique turque en Méditerranée orientale. Voilà, vous avez la parole. Well, thank you. Uh, I would like to thank you and Alijan Tayla for the kind invitation. Uh, I'm really delighted to be here with you today. Uh, I'm going to talk about the, the rise of Eurasianism and its impact on the maritime strategy in Turkey uh, that, uh, that has manifested itself in, in the Mediterranean, first time in Turkish history. What I understand from Eurasianism, uh, I would like to begin with that, and then I will talk about how Eurasian, Eurasianism uh, developed in Turkey and how it is connected to the Eastern Mediterranean, to the new phenomenon. For me, I think Eurasianism is a quasi-ideology. I mean, it's not a deep-rooted ideology, well thought out ideology or political thought. It's mostly a reaction to, to the West supremacy in, in world history and in, in capitalist world order that some of the countries lead, led by China and Russia, they, they're part of the world capitalist system, but they don't want to be uh, part of this hierarchical political and strategic order. So it's, it's a kind of a game that they, they're integrated, they're almost fully integrated in the world capitalist system, but they don't want to be part of its, its strategic uh, leg. So th th there's a growing uh, contention between, between those, those three powers. And I think each country, including Turkey and Turkish Eurasianists, they understand different things from Eurasianism. I mean, for China, it's, uh, I'm sorry, I, 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 uh, I, I don't understand much French, so I, I could not follow the, the, the previous uh, speeches. So there may be some overlaps, um, um, maybe some divergences. Uh, uh, for, for, for Russia, probably it's a bargaining chip. But for, for China, it's, 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 it's a challenge to the US hegemony in the world, in world politics. And China confronts U.S. almost in every part of the world, starting from, stretching from Venezuela to Guadar in, in, Pakistan, in, 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 the, in, in the Balkans, uh, where, he, where China is trying to infiltrate for a while. But for Russia, it's more like a, a balancing game between, between China and, and the United States. But for Turkey, well, there is one thing that, that, that is good, that Eurasianism is represented by a political party and leader which has fallen from grace for a long time and has no credibility. So that's the most uh, positive thing about Eurasianism in Turkey. But, however, it's, it's, it has some, some roots. I mean, it has also developed as a reaction to, the, to Turkey's uh, dependence on, on, on the Western world against basically US and NATO. But for Turkey, I mean, it's not a policy approach that the Turkish Eurasianist wants to uh, dominate or even become influential actor in the, in, in the, in the, in the Eurasian land. It's too big for, for Turkey to, to dominate this area. What Turkey is trying to do, I mean, it depends on, on, on which actor we're talking about, is that try to have some influence in, the, in Central Asia, very limited because they, they immediately face Russia, which, which is under Russian uh, political and strategic interests. And so far, and there's a kind of a deal between Turkey and Russia. And Turkey does not infiltrate into Central Asia so much that, 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 that may upset Russia. And Russia tolerates Turkey in, in somewhere in the Middle East. And that, 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 that's the deal between the two, two countries, but which is not written, but which is, which is, which is a, a deal made probably between Erdogan and Putin in their 
personal diplomacy uh, exchanges. For Turkish Eurasianism, Eurasianism is a byproduct of uh, Ulusalcılık. It's it's not the same thing, but it has some some uh, things in, in common at least. What I call um, I, I, I I try to understand the, the, the debates over over Ulusalcılık in Turkey, which is I think the, the unique case in, in in the world that nationalism is so much divided. Uh, so I call it as a short. Cut. Secular nationalism, which is, I mean, th there are some sociological differences that national, Ulusalcılık is, is, is a secular, it has a secular content, very strong secular content. Uh, geographically, it is more on the, on the sea sides, I mean, uh, whereas nationalism is, is geographically based in, in the inland, uh, historically. And nationalism, Turkish nationalism, as represented by the ultra right MHP is, is a product of Cold War era, Cold War circumstances who is the other is not other nations but other ideologies, communists I mean, they are other Turks no, not other countries or other uh, basically, I mean, you can find other elements as well, so the, 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 there are some clear differences, whereas in 1990s uh, even the, 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 the division was so strong that they I, I, I know that uh, members of the MHP party, the, the Nationalist Party, were not allowed to, to have contact with, with the Ulusalcılık, etc. So it's so, so different uh, ideological trends in Turkey. Uh, well, what they, they asked for, the Eurasianists, as represented by the Vatan Party, I, I sacrificed myself reading their newspaper every day. <laughs> uh, it requires some kind of a you know, temper control, uh, but I, I, I try to manage it. And, uh, they have a firm belief that the West is in decline, and each day the West is declining, and each each day is the is not China, but the Asia is, is rising. And I have written, I'm hum humbly written a, a few uh, pieces of ads that it's, geographies, they don't, geographies don't rise up. It's capitalism that is expanding. I mean, you, you, you're, you're looking from a perspective which is uh, based on geographical de determinism. That, I mean, you know, it's, it's not like that. All of a sudden, a geographical area is, is rising up economically. I mean, that, that, that's not that, that's nonsense. That, 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 that this ignores the whole political economy of, of, of the world and world history. But they don't they don't want to accept this fact. I mean, this is a shortcut that Asia is rising. You know, capitalist West is and U.S. is declining almost on a daily daily basis. There is. One important, I mean, th there's a kind of a coalition between the, the Eurasians and, and the AKP government. I'm, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, as you know, starting from June 2007, uh, the, the famous or notorious Ergen Ekon case where you know, former uh, elements of deep state with a lot of uh, journalists and you know, academics, etc., they were put into jail which had a new phase in 2011 where especially the uh, Turkish uh, Navy was targeted. That, that this time the, the, the members of the Navy officers were put in the jail. And uh, Erdogan, you know, they, he openly collaborated with, with the Gulen movement at that time. But when Erdogan broke up with the Gulen movement, Sometime in 2012, and definitely at late 2013, so he switched his position and made a deal with the uh, soldiers and nationalists of the year. And he released them from prison in 2014 and made alliance against the Gulen movement, which is a quite typical Erdogan style. We know it very well. 
He's, he's very good at this. I mean, he's, he's a good politician in this time. So he, he has no calms. He has no conscience. And he could be anything. He could be any, anything, anybody. You know, he could be a liberal. He could be an Islamist. He could be a nationalist. He could be a Eurasianist. So he, he could change his mind the other day. So that, that, that was not a problem. At the moment, he realized that his electorate doesn't care about it, or he, he doesn't have a problem to, to, to be in different ideological uh, issues. So starting from 2014, and especially uh, with the election defeat in 2015, so Erdogan had to collaborate with both Eurasianists, nationalists, and Eurasians. That's a new phase in Turkish history, which we, we had it before, in late 1970s, that, that Turkey ha since then has been ruled by a nationalist Islamist coalition, which is a two, I mean, that, 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 that's something paradoxical, which is the two strongest, two most powerful ideological current in Turkey, the nationalism and, and uh, Islamism, but it's in decline now in politics, in practice. That, 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 that's something par paradoxical, and we have to uh, probably think about it. And nationalists in general, I mean, the, the biggest difference between Erdogan's approach to Eurasianism and the Eurasianists themselves is that Erdogan considers Eurasianism as a, as a tactical, as a temporary process that he wants to play Russia strategically and China economically to balance off the US. Whereas the Eurasians themselves, they don't want Erdogan to play a balancing game, but they want to take Turkey out of the Western world to, be, to insert Turkey into, into this trio of Russia, China, Iran, and Turkey. And they made it a quadruple. No, that, that's the main difference. And they know that Erdogan is playing. They, they, they very well know that Erdogan is not a Eurasianist. But for now, they need Erdogan, and Erdogan needs them. So that's why the, this, this game is, 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 is played out. I mean, you, you, you know probably some of their traits and characteristics, that they are strongly anti-US. They want Turkey out of NATO. They think that the biggest enemy of Turkey is, is US and NATO, they argue that Gladio, the, 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 the deep state of the Cold War years, is still running, uh, is still very active, is undermined, the West is undermining Erdogan, and when the West, the US, Biden, he, Biden's extensions in Turkey, they target Erdogan, they claim that they're actually targeting Turkey itself, etc., etc. That, that, that's an antagonistic way of thinking, and they, they think that. They argue strongly that their, the, the, the West is undermining Turkey, is bent on partitioning Turkey, is containing Turkey through Greece, through Syria, Iraq, everywhere in, in the Black Sea, in the Mediterranean, in Cyprus. So the, the, this, uh, this type of mindset that we are accustomed to see during the 1990s that Turkey is encircled by, by the enemies, is, is, is kept alive by, by, the, by the Eurasianists. Economically, they're not very uh, wise. Um, they, they, they support capitalism, but in a, in a state capitalism, it's etatism, of, they, they want to go back to the early years of Kemalism, as Kemalist era, etc. But it, it's not very clear what they want, they want to have in, in, in Turkey economically. They rely on uh, conspiracy theories, uh, which is very popular, of course, uh, it has some kind of a of an appeal to to the public. Uh, they they're very keen on finding traitors. Uh, you, you know this story that this really is, uh, gets something sometimes quite boring. They have good ties with with Alexander Dugin. I I think uh, Ali Jan has talked about him. And the problem is that the problem with the, with this party and the leader, they 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 are not reliable. They are not. They don't have uh, much credibility. It's more like a sect uh, that that they, they represented by by a leader and few people, but they they committed uh, 
to the to the to the Excuse Labour me? and to the which party do you have? Oh, what what party? Party. 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 party? I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Well, uh, how it connects to to the Eastern Mediterranean? This is our main topic. But Eurasianism is basically a, a product of a territorial thinking. It does not have a maritime, maritime uh, dimension, basically. What uh, James Gurdjieff has, has added is a maritime dimension to it. And he, tries to, he tried to develop a maritime uh, strategy for Turkey, which Turkey probably uh, doesn't have. I mean, culturally, Turks have not, not had a maritime nation. I mean, you, you, you know, you know it. Um, I don't want to uh, spend much time on it. But first time, uh, Eurasianist thinking was connected to the to the, the to the geographically to the Eastern Mediterranean and think as as a thought process to to maritime issues. That that was important somehow. So we have two things. I mean, nationalists and uh, Islamists together, and Eurasianism has a maritime dimension. That, that was something new in Turkey, in, uh, starting from 2015s. As you know, uh, Cem Gürdeniz developed this idea in 2006. But nobody knew. I didn't know. <laughs> Actually, I personally wrote a criticism of it in, 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 in the internet set I was regularly contributing. And he called my uh, one, one of our common friends. He, he's a senior professor. He's a retired professor in his 80s. And he, I, I was so disappointed by his reaction. He just called me CIA agent. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> I, was, I just criticized. I mean, and this criticism was quite soft. I mean, I said it's theoretically very weak. I don't know if it is a harsh criticism. I mean, it's weak. I mean, I, I, it's not well thought or it's not, it doesn't have a philosophical background. It repeats, reproduces the whole thing that we have heard for many decades that Turkey is encircled, Turkey faces a severe paranoia. Para yeah, paranoia. I mean, it, 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 he doesn't call it paranoia, but <laughs> Turkey is under, under threat. And, that, 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 that's boring. I mean, we, we kept hearing it for. I mean, when I was uh, at, at, you know, at, at, was uh, when I was a college student in 19, back in 1980s, we had the same story. And he doesn't, he doesn't add something new to it. I and mean, the, the only thing original, he, he says that it's it's been made through through the Mediterranean region. I mean, that, 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 that's not convincing. So I was a little bit critical of this perspective, but he was quite, uh, you know. Reactive. Uh, I, I would, I would prefer a more civilized exchange. I mean, he could deliver another. I mean, he could contribute another uh, article criticizing my views, etc. But it, that was not possible. I and mean, we, we lost it for a long time ago, probably. Well, with with this new coalition, Turkey moved into more authoritarianism domestically and more militarization in its foreign policy. That, that was something new in Turkish history, too. Uh, that has significant repercussions for Turkish uh, foreign and uh, defense uh, policies. Previously, I would like to go back to, 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 to the 2000s. Turkey, under the AKP government, tried to uh, dominate the Middle East with uh, Davutoğlu as a mas mastermind. His, his book, The Strategic Debt, I was also critical of, of this mm -hmm. book and his ap approach. It's really flawed. I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised that a professor of in international relations has written it, such, such things. Uh, I, 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 he doesn't allow it to be translated into English. Professor from Boazici. Yes, he is graduate of Brazil and a student of uh, famous professor, sociologist. And my professor, by the way. Yes. <laughs> I was a student uh, of when he was writing this book, Davutoğlu. The, the, the okay. center, so center periphery I mean, paradigm in Turkish society. In you PhD. remember the name? She's a woman? Or no, no, man. No. Sherif Mardin? From, you know, Sherif Mardin. 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 
Oh, was his, yes. Oh, yeah. She yeah. was his uh, PhD advisor. Anyway, uh, last years of at that time, the AKP government tried diplomacy, economy, and other soft instruments like the Turkish movies, etc. Et but it failed. I mean, I don't want to go into. Uh, oh, <laughs> I mean, at that time, I mean, that was also sanctioned by the U.S. I mean, it was a time of you know, broader Middle East and North Africa initiative, and and the Turkish system was given an, an, an assignment that first, I mean, that, that was a time of triple transformation, what I would call, that first, Turkish nationalists would transform their own ideology, like, I mean, from national outlook led by Erbakan, the late Erbakan, mm -hmm. They, were, they would move from uh, national economy to globalization, to, to neoliberalism. They would move from uh, anti-Western stance to, to pro-Western stance. Right? And they would fix their uh, perception of Israel and, and the Jewish community, etc. So the, the deal was, was so open. So and Erdogan was, was, was so keen to, to, to accept this, this deal. And he said, uh, my ideology was my sh short, and I, I took off. That was so easy for him at that time. It was back in early 2000s. And then in the second phase, they would transform the Turkish state, which is, I mean, a traditional Turkish security state that the West was pressuring on the Turkish security elite that you have to transform the, the, the state ideology in order to comply with globalization. But they were resisting it, and at the, at, at the center of it was the military. And then they said that we could transform Turkish state and with, with huge uh, privatization projects, etc., etc. And at the third phase, they would project their own transformation to the Muslim societies in the Middle East. That was the deal. And Turkey would be a model for the Middle East and partner for the U.S. I mean, that, that, that was the model partnership formula. But what happened then, after Davutoglu became Minister of Foreign Affairs, he probably convinced Erdogan that Turkey does not have to satisfy him itself to be a mere model, but it could be a leader of the Middle East because there is a power vacuum that the United States is in decline, that Obama declared that they would withdraw from the, from the Middle East, that they would withdraw troops from Afghanistan and Iraq. That was 2010, 2000. 11, that there would be new opportunity spheres would be open for Turkey. That was the idea. I, I followed, I almost collected almost all, all, the, all the speeches of the Uttal at that time. There, there are some speeches that I could not believe in my eyes that, that he, he was so euphorious that Turkey faces a chance of uh, that an opportunity that may come once in a century. That they they have to, they have to fulfill their responsibility. They have to. The the, the river was diverted 100 years ago, so the, you, yeah, the, it comes to, to its own own natural flow. That is Turkish dominance of the, of, the, of, the, of the Middle East. That was their idea, and and the Arab Spring brought a new opportunity for 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 the AKP government, and in. 2012, during the AKP party convention, they invited Ganushi from Tunisia, Mursi from uh, Egypt, uh, you know, Barzani from uh, Northern Iraq, Hamid Mesha. I mean, so the, 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 <laughs> that, was, the, that was a party party convention that they said that, that there is a mental ideological uh, combination in the Middle East, and they would sit on, in, on, on, on the top of a new, new Ottoman spell. That was a new Ottoman idea. And Dovutoglu has written that in his strategic that, that book, and Turkish intellectuals did not want to read it, you know, truly. They didn't under, they don't want to, un probably they didn't want to understand the, the, the main content of it. It was an expansionist ideology that failed everywhere in the Middle East, basically. So I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I place some, some uh, uh, I refer to that uh, 
period because that was the failure of the Neo-Ottomanism. And when, <laughs> after 2015, with the Nationalist Islamist Coalition, then we, we had another experience, another examination of a militar militarized version of Neo-Ottomanism, what I call. It also failed in the Eastern Mediterranean. That, that, that's the problem. Well, I mean, uh, co coming back to, to, to uh, the Blue Homeland uh, Doctrine, it proposes, I mean, there is something positive about it that it tries to promote the, the maritime consciousness of Turkish society and government. That, that's okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't have a problem with that. But other than that, almost all its premises are wrong. I mean, it's so confrontational. It, it places the West and Turkey in, in a conflictual way. I mean, that, 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 that's not the world that we can live in. That, that, that's the main problem with, with this uh, approach. It claims, he claims that Turkey's maritime rights are under constant threat by the Western countries. That this is a new self-treaty. At that time, they discovered a map prepared by two professors in the University of Sevilla. I mean, that was a big fuss in Turkey that at that time that Turkey was, would be strangled in the Mediterranean. That that we would uh, we would ask for the ask for Brussels to go into swim in in the Mediterranean Sea. That that was the hysteria uh, that promoted by by the government at that time. And Cyprus is, is, has a critical place in in this doctrine that Turkey should refuse almost all uh, solution packages like uh, federation, confederation, and then Turkey should promote the, 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 the recognition of the uh, Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. And one of the misleading things about... It claims that Turkey, through the implementation of this doctrine, has reclaimed 462,000 square kilometer, as if Turkey made a territorial gain. That was quite misleading. And there were energy resources that would help Turkey to maintain natural gas for 471 years. How did you make the calculation for <laughs> I mean, where, where is this natural gas? I mean, Egypt has found it. If you if you pay the price, you can get natural gas from Egypt about, for about 400 years. But I mean, it's not yours. So th th this is a simple logic which had resonated with the public at that time. So the Turkish public perceived it as if Turkey has judicial authority, sovereignty over these best maritime area, which is not, I mean, this is, the, this can also only be, I mean, in, in the Black Sea region, Turkey has, uh, <coughs> 12 miles of territorial waters, that's all, <laughs> which is, which is nothing, 12 miles. In the, in the, in the Mediterranean, it's, it's got 12 miles of territorial waters, and in the Aegean, it's six miles, that's all. Other than that, you have no judicial authority, sovereign authority in international waters. But they didn't say it. And professors, the so-called strategists, appeared on Turkish national TVs every night, claiming that Turkey has rediscovered, reclaimed a new sea territory. And this is also based on, on sea denial. Ter territorial now that Turkey cut off the newly discovered energy resources they 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 cannot reach to Europe because Turkey is, is controlling these areas so that that was quite misleading and it's, 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 it bordered propaganda at that time and it proposed an aggressive policy 
maritime policy for, for the government. That, that, was the, that was the basic uh, problem. So what happened after that? Turkish Navy I and mean, Turkish, uh, Turkish Petroleum, uh, the, the state company, started <laughs> seismic explorations in the military. And it was always accompanied by at least three frigates. By the, that was, the aim was not to find natural resources there. The aim was to, find, was to show, to flex your Turkey's muscles, to, to show that Turkey is the dominant actor power in, in the Eastern Mediterranean. And secondly, uh, Turkey tried to block, prevent other companies and countries for further drills. Turkey blocked any contract by the Republic of Cyprus and ExxonMobil at the same time. That was the, 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 the reflection of, of the strategy. And third, Turkey involved in and engaged in the conflict in Libya. That was something new. After more than 100 years, Turkey has become part of the conflict, actively part of the conflict in Libya. And they legitimized it with the Blue Homeland Doctrine. They said in, this, in November 2019, Turkey made a deal. Libya, Turkey made a deal. No, this is the this is the map that at that time uh, showed that how Turkey is strangled by by the EU and, and, and using Greece and Egypt as proxies. That that was that was widespread map that Turkey is strangled in, in, in this small area. This is the maritime de delimitation agreement between Turkey and. And the Saraj Gubal government, I wouldn't say Libya because Libya is still divided. Mm -hmm. So I, did, I, I have the copy, but they, 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 they don't. I, I got it somehow, but they don't, they don't uh, disclose it. So I, I, it, it's, it's, it's registered in the UN, but it's still problematic in many ways. That, that this is the idea of Jihad Yajid, the admiral, that Turkey can have. Uh, delimitation agreement with, with Libya, but it is not certain. But th there are many problems with it in, in terms of maritime law, and international maritime law, that it, it ignores totally uh, Greece's, uh, <coughs> this is Crete, Greece, <coughs> Greece's uh, economic exclusion zone. <laughs> so so that, that, that's very problematic in any way, and politically and uh, from a perspective of uh, international law. It's, it's not even an agreement. It is called memorandum of understanding because if, 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 if it were agreement, it had to be approved by the, by the, by the parliament, which didn't approve it, etc., etc. Turkey actively involved in the Libyan crisis. Uh, Turkey used proxy war, transferring militants from jihadists from Syria to Libya. Uh, previously, Turkey transferred jihadists from Libya to Li Syria, and then uh, from Syria to Libya. Now, he's also Turkey is also transferring them from Libya to Syria, according to the news. And Turkey has engaged the first drone wars of the 21st century in Libya. Turkey against United Arab Emirates, the arch enemy of. Erdogan. Uh, now he met him. I don't know. Um, um, inconsistency is not a problem for the center right governments in Turkey, center right actors. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, they don't have any, any problem with that. They, that they did it this, this year and they, they can do the, the other one. So that, that's not a big, big deal for them. Well, This was a product of uh, nationalist and Islamist coalition, but it, behind the curtain, it is also a policy of the Turkish 
security establishment. I, I don't know how to call it. I mean, you can call it deep state or you can call it I'm Turkish real state or something. Like that. There's no. Some of my colleagues say that there's no deep state. The state itself, the state, deep and, and, and surface. This is all the same state. But the, the the ideology is that what I call it a forward defense stretching from Azerbaijan to northern Iraq where Turkey has around 20 military bases now, northern Syria, northern Cyprus, eastern Mediterranean and Libya. This is a line line of defense. This is the this is the this was the idea of the Turkish uh, security bureaucracy and they they realized it through Erdogan and they could Erdogan could do it because they also needed Islamists to do it you, they used it as a proxy and Erdogan was, was a better uh, actor to, to, to use these jihadists so you can find the traces of this forward defense strategy in Dawutol. This is where Islamist and nationalist approach to, to security and defense merged, combined. Dawutol writes this in his strategic death book that defense of Istanbul starts from Bosnia, Sarajevo, and defense of Erzurum plateau starts from Grozny. That's a bizarre idea. I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, you're not living in the 19th century. I mean, you're not Bismarck. <laughs> I mean, the, yeah, you have currency rates. You have central bank. You have financial inflows, investments. But he says, but, but he taught at the, at the National Academy, Military Academy in Istanbul, and I can, I can show you the same similar lines in in a book published by the Turkish Ministry of Defense, White the White Book. They have similar things, and I taught a Turkish <coughs> war academy in Ankara. They had similar similar thoughts that defense of Turkey starts from cross border areas. You have to face the enemy. Not in your borderline, but in cross-border areas. This is why Turkey has a military base in Somalia, the biggest military base, in Somalia, in, which is in Somalia. Tur this is why Turkey has military presence in Qatar. I, I, I don't, I don't agree with this idea, with this defense strategy. I totally disagree with that. But this is how Turkey security establishment, with the help of the Islamists, think it that way. So every every policy, every policy choice has its own cost, and Blue Ham Homeland policy has its price for Turkey and for the AKP probably. First of all, Turkey is militarily overstretched. It has troops in twelve countries right now, and it's except the Yemeni civil war. It has become part of every conflict and disagreements in this region. That was too much, even for for, for our people. Turkey's assertiveness in this region has brought a variety of countries together. This is why the maritime dimension aspect of Eurasianism has failed. Turkey brought U.S., e, the EU, France. Egypt, Israel, Greece, Republic of Cyprus, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, all together. You cannot deal with that. I mean, it's too, it was, that was too big a coalition of countries to deal with for Turkey, which is going through an economic crisis. Turkey was isolated diplomatically, energy issues, and strategically. The AKP government is isolated ideologically because it has no friends except Qatar, that's a policy. And Turkey is isolated strategically. That's the end of the story. 
New alliances were formed in the region between United Arab Emirates and Republic of Cyprus, Saudi Arabia and Greece, which we never thought of before. Interestingly, sorry, two minutes, two, three two minutes. minutes. Okay, yeah, it's almost the end. Uh, there was a critical point, but I, I, no, don't, I don't say it. Finish it. So you, no, finish you, you, you. Finish it. I mean, there, there was a, there was a balance of power in the Eastern Mediterranean, which is not really tough. That Turkey was close to Israel and the United States, and the Arabs were close to EU, and, and uh, Greece was Greeks were close to Arabs and, and, the, and the EU. That was that was a balance, and it worked for the West quite well for for a long time. And with the blue homeland doctrine, it was all disrupted. And starting with the, with the broke-off relation with, with Israel, that United States moved its tilted its support to Greece and, 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 and Republic of Cyprus together with Israel. So the whole balance of power in, the, in that region has been disrupted, and which is which will not be easy to to remake. So, uh, in general. Blue Homeland is dead. Cem Gürdeniz was put into jail for a while, though he was released. And Jihad Yaiji, the, the, the admiral who, who developed yeah. the idea, he was forced to resign, actually. But its territorial logic is still in place in Syria, in Iraq, in Azerbaijan, in northern uh, Cyprus. Eurasianism itself has no future in Turkey. When it comes to a crossroads, not only the Turkey, but Turkish, so even Turkish society, chooses the West, the West. Going abroad in Turkey still means going to Europe or the United States, not to Russia, not to China, not to Iran. Everybody knows that I want to go abroad. I mean, if you go, go to a youngster, if he says I want to go abroad, he means or he she means he wants to. She wants he or she wants to go to France or Germany or England. <laughs> this has not changed, despite the 20 years of Islamist rule in Turkey. That Islamist deepened Turkey's dependency economically, strategically, and politically into the West. Despite the, the personal relationship developed between Erdogan and Putin, which is almost nothing, when he is gone. Thank you. Thank you so much for this very stimulating, very challenging uh, paper, presentation. And uh, there is a lot of uh, questions, of course, and uh, um, we've lost the mics. Here, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. summarize this uh, reflection. Um, my first question is: I was told by a colleague recently that they released a map, an official map of Mafiatan. Do you have a, do you have the official map of Baghdad or is it only the sort of the artisanal thing that we find everywhere? We... I don't I don't I don't know if there is an official map because not, nothing official here. Well, someone told me that they had released one actually. So, released. Yes. I'm not Where? aware of it. I'm I don't know. That's, this is why I'm asking. I mean, it's a colleague is, from Kadehas who told me. This is the one that is shared by the government officials. So this it one. could be, yeah. uh, well, this and actually there is the one just about before. the Libya-Turkish yeah, the, the uh, maritime one. agreement, yeah. but uh, including that part as well. The first one. Okay, yeah. I, have, I have one where, um, because there are variants, there are, there are different, there are, there are declinations, declinations of this map. I have one where Cyprus is red, full red, yeah. like the Turkish territory, showing that it is supposed to be part of Turkey. So one question is, how do you see the future of Cyprus, within the the, 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 the mindset of the of their party. Um, another question is: uh, You said that the Turks have no, uh, they're not they're not maritime people, and they're not inclined to go to sea. 
But the Ottoman fleet was the dominant fleet in the 16th century, and it was it was an enormous, uh, you know, dissuasion capacity. But not only it was a, it was a, a combat, uh, you know, fleet. And uh, this was Ottoman. This was Ottoman. Yes, but this is this is precisely the question. Like, where, where does the neo Ottomanism stand behind this uh, sort of rehabilitation of the maritime ambition of Turkey? Uh, do you see it? within this sort of neo ottoman uh, frame. And uh, maybe the third question is to say that um, militarized nationalism has failed in the East Med. So why do you think it has failed from your point of view? Because me as French think that they, they had great success. They managed to scare everyone. So is it, is it only... Um, is it only um, a, a mental projection of power, or do you think that there, there are intentions really to to advance concretely, to gain territories? Uh, because if you talk to the French Ministry of Defense, um, the official um, mindset was that the Turks were really a revisionist power that was extremely aggressive, and that there was a real risk to go to military escalation in the Aegean. I, yes, of course. Uh, as for Cyprus, both Islamist and, and national state, they place great importance to strategic, you know, position. So, but Erdogan has a, has, a, has not a consistent policy towards towards Cyprus. I don't know. I mean, uh, for a while, you know, this you know, he accepted the unknown plan, which envisaged the withdrawal of Turkish troops, there, but it was rejected by the by the Greek Cypriots. But recently, for a, for a while, Erdogan government rejects uh, federal solutions to the Cyprus issue. But the, 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 the information, the leakage, shows that he is ready to withdraw some Turkish troops. This may be a, a, a critical point uh, in relation between nationalists and Islamists. So they, they, they would definitely not uh, accept that. And there, there may be some kind of a breakup in, in, in their ties with the nationalists in Turkey. I don't think that he can cope with that. Uh, I'm not sure, but it's uh, the, the domination, military control of northern Cyprus was so important for Turkish uh, security establishment, for Turkish state, that it you know made an operation or what we call in Turkish or, or military intervention in, in the island that still occupies one third of the island with around 30,000 troops since 1974, and they don't want to give it up uh, easily. Uh, as for your second question about, I'm sorry, I could not take more. Yeah, the Turks and the sea, sea and okay. Ottomans in the yes, sea. Yes, uh, for a while, during the Ottoman time, the, the, the Ottoman fleet was strong, quite strong in the Mediterranean, but they could not go, go, go to overseas. I mean, that, was, that was the end. And the, the Turkish, uh, the, the strength of Turkish military power was always uh, uh, land force. And to Turkish, when, when you say Turkish military, I mean, you understand the, the, the yes. land forces, basically. I mean, that is so determined. I find it uh, very fascinating to see how uh, things appear so differently from inside Turkey and outside Turkey. Mm -hmm. You said that uh, the, um, the Mavi Vatan uh, policy failed. Mm -hmm. And you said that it succeeded. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this is very fascinating. I mean, where do we stand? Maybe it is because Erdogan has two different layers of action, of, uh, a, a provocative layer of action, and he pushes things uh, scandalously. He makes the scandal, and this is one of the part of his strategy, and sees to where it can go, so how far he can go with it. And uh, another uh, layer of action is to go on uh, debating and to go on uh, uh, bargaining with, uh, with his uh, uh, um, uh, with the, with the, with with Russia, uh, uh, United States, and uh, its partners. Maybe this is the, the, the reason why it is. You, you, do you think that uh, in Europe, 
they take it for granted what he says, everything he says, and this is why you say it has succeeded, or uh, materially, because he puts, he, he really puts his frigate uh, into the sea and his uh, uh, threats, uh, really, etc., uh, etc. Et so I, I try to understand, I try to formulate how you are both right. Uh, and from from inside, you, you really see this like a comedy, like a, what do you think? What, what, pour qui tu te prends? Hmm. Uh, I can also, and, yeah. yeah. Mm. And what, this is what uh, he is saying. That, yeah. And you say it's really, the, the, he's frightening. So, where do we stand? Should I? Maybe Marie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's a very interesting question. Maybe, you know, uh, uh, there is a lot of... Uh, uh, it, it, it's not real. I mean, this is uh, this kind of uh, man uh, threat is not so real because uh, all these projections about empires, you know, empires like Russia, Turkey, ex-empires, uh, there was a Russian sociologist, uh, Yuri Levada, who used to say that uh, it is for the empires the same thing that for the amputé, mm. which means that they, they have lost arm. The, the arm, mm -hmm. but the arm is still uh, scratching or uh, something. So, and, and we have seen this also with Hungary. Mm. With uh, Can you figure it out that now Hungarian people are wondering about uh, Traité de Trianon. Mm. Yes. Same thing yes, yes, for, yes. for uh, uh, Turkey yes. with, uh, with the... the oh. Remise en cause de la distribution après la Première Guerre mondiale. Oui, voilà. So, so there is a lot of fantasy in, in, in this. So and few uh, reality. But uh, kind of uh, uh, countries like uh, Turkey or Russia, they have a strong capacity of uh, nuisance, of uh, uh, doing uh, evil. Evil. Yeah. So that, that explains maybe that uh, you are uh, not on the same uh, level, but both of you are right, which mm. is, uh, in fact, for us, they are frightening, because it's, uh, we almost went to a war in the uh, Mediterranean, uh, so it was, uh, and the, the German Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, ECOMAS, said this, he said, uh, I thought uh, there was going to be something like this, but then uh, it's a very... Uh, uh, it's a projection, it's a very weak projection of a state which is weak at the end. And same thing for Russia. It, it, it's a weak state. That's why they, they are like this. They want to eat everybody. Why, don't you, why do you take Crimea? You have uh, 17 million uh, kilometers, uh, square, uh, square kilometers. You are the, the, the biggest country in the world and you want to take the, the Crimea not to develop it, because you don't, you don't have no means to develop it. Mm -hmm. You are not able to build roads. Your PIB in Russia is the same as Italy. So it's a big and it's uh, at the same time very weak. Sure. And same, time, same thing for uh, Erdogan's Turkey. Like, at the end, nothing. <laughs> nothing. The drones, yeah. The drones. <laughs> but at the end, it's the same, same thing for Putin. For example, he hates uh, West. Erdogan hates West. But these guys, when you see them in Moscow, they run Mercedes. Yes. They have uh, Armani uh, uh, suits. Uh, the, even their shoes are from Italy or from France. And either their, their stocks are not made in Russia. Because do you know any, uh, for example, famous uh, mark, famous uh, brand. Brand, brand in Russia, except Gazprom or Yandex? Can you give me one? No, there is none. At least Turkey has, uh, has a little uh, capacity on this. It's more industrial, more developed, let's, let's say. But uh, the, the, the mentality is the same, the mentality of uh, empires, ex-empires. Uh, well, to put it simply, basically, the one, there are things speak, that speak for, for uh, Dorothy and that speak for Ilhan. To put it very simply, I think, uh, as in terms of here, what was practiced in Karabakh was a basically very clear example of how far it can go. It was Turkey's war. It was the laboratorium yes. for the Turkey-produced uh, 
drones, uh, armed drones, etc., etc. It, it was put into practice, and that's very clear. And the second one is, of course, uh, the uh, uh, the continued militarization of Turkish industry on low level, small scale level. The so-called Turkish tigers, Anatolian tigers, are now producing more and more reserve parts for the for the parts of the Turkish defense. And it is becoming, although many people don't see this, this is a very serious, successful story. Oh, yes, yes but don't forget that uh, they are not able to make I'm coming to engi that. engine, I'm engines. Com I'm coming. And this is a problem. Right. If you can build a, a tank, if you can build a... a, a sure. A, yeah. They I'm don't have the know-how. Uh, this is, but this is, I'm coming to this. This is coming, you know, this is a project put into practice, and it has been so far successful with the deals with Africa, etc. But then also on the diplomatic level, divide and rule. The Spain, the recent deal with Spain is, you know, the Spanish are completely scared because of the Garanti Bank PB where they lost, they will lose about 60 billion euros approximately, and they rushed to Ankara. You know, they, they tell in behind closed doors to Mitsotakis when they meet in the latest round. The first thing Sanchez told Mitsotakis, don't tell me anything about Erdogan. We are in very friendly terms. I don't want to hear anything about Erdogan, which of course infuriated the Greeks. Greeks. Mm. So there are these divisions. Divide and rule. Italians, Malta, uh, Malta is a small one, but Spain and Italy are playing this game. Uh, so this is going to continue. This is not going to end in terms of, uh, maybe in terms of specifically Blue Homeland perhaps ending, but these, these ambitions will continue. But on the other hand, the one that speaks for, for Iran is basically it's about money. Uh, when you run out of money, as, as Turkey does now, uh, the, the defense dimensions, production dimensions, the ambition of extensionism, you know, like Versailles, like uh, the, the revanchism, uh, will not be able to be easily implemented uh, because Turkey is going bankrupt, more or less. So I think it's these two perspectives are, are important to, to, to see mm -hmm. as a lens. Yeah, sure. Um, well, uh, that, that, that's, a, that's a good point, actually. And perceptions and, and appearances could be misleading sometimes. Uh, yes, Erdogan and Turkish Navy has uh, some prowess and uh, some power in the, the Mediterranean. And, uh, Turkey can harass uh, a few uh, French vessels and Greek vessels, but that's all. And first of all, mm -hmm. Turkey has <laughs> some military successes, but you shouldn't forget that all the wars and conflicts that Turkey has been involved in were against the sub-state actors, except Armenia, mm -hmm. I ISIS, PKK, PYD after. I mean, Turkey has as a military force of, mm. of tradition. Even the, what is left off of left over from the Ergen Khan case or the or the coup attempt, etc., was enough to, to defeat these sub-state small and irregular actors. Mm. Uh, that, that's not a big big success, success story in itself. Turkey has not fought against it as, 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 as a powerful military force. I mean. Secondly, <clears throat> all the actors that, that had contact with Erdogan, they know him. They know that at some point he knows where to stop. So they tolerate him. Yes, he was spoiler somewhere here and there, but at the end, he backed up in the Eastern Mediterranean, definitely. Mm -hmm. Erdogan was so uh, confident that Turkey would continue with research and exploration activities in this Mediterranean. Turkey has pulled back all its drill ships and seismic ships. ships. Yeah. They're in, 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 in the harbors now. Here and I have a question. Sure. Uh, do, uh, uh, what if it was not uh, uh, Biden who was uh, elected? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Trump was still uh, United States President. Pompeo. Or well, we'd come back. Pompeo. Quoi? <laughs> <laughs> Pompeo. State Department. Huh? Secretary of State Pompeo. Yes. The question is okay. uh, uh, Turkey, w would Turkey withdraw its uh, vessels from. Yes. yes. 
because even even the Trump administration was against Turkey's uh, growing military uh, bomb in the Eastern Mediterranean. It, is, it was Pompeo who visited uh, Greece, and he came to Alexander. He 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 spent overnight yes. in Thessaloniki, which is, which is not, not something common. That he didn't visit Turkey, which was, I mean normally yeah, the yeah. You, you, yeah, yeah, yeah U.S. administration had a balanced policy. If they visit Turkey, they they visit, they would visit Greece too, but they didn't do it. And the the agreements, the military agreements made with Greece, even Biden came to power, and Turkey changed its policy in, in Cyprus issue. I mean, they, they were they were tolerated to, 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 to Turkey basically, but they, the Turkish governments they, they they never say to the Turkish public because they say that all the world is against us in the Cyprus issue. But uh, basically, the, the United States was tolerating Turkey in Cyprus, but they they tilted their policy now. So the EU impose sanctions on Turkey. If Turkey would continue with its policy of blue homeland in the Eastern Mediterranean, Turkey would have faced severe sanctions from the EU and it could not face it. So Erdogan stopped and get back from the policy of blue homeland. I'm sorry that he frightened the French. <laughs> 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 I hope he didn't. No, 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 Germans I mean, and he's refugees, the refugees so, are the refugee, still yes. there. He, he, he's the disruptor, he's spoiler, I mean, he's, he, that, that's, that's true, but they don't want trouble. He's a troublemaker. Yeah. In this sense, you're right. But in the end, I mean, that is in... Uh, there is no end. <laughs> there is no end. Of course, this is the question. Yes. There is no, no end. That, that, I mean, the, the, the new way of being <clears throat> hostile and the, the new way of being in conflict maybe is not the big great war but this kind of nuisance this kind of uh, 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 evil this this kind of uh, harassment as you say uh, but maybe there is no in the plans there is no uh, uh, at the end the end doesn't come but and I mean, th th this is this kind of we have maybe uh, to re orient our uh, our uh, uh, schemes schema uh, to to analyze this, the, the end doesn't come. Well, I don't. I mean, each government has its end. I mean, so it will terminate at Maybe some point. Maybe it will come. I would like to ask you uh, one question. Uh, it's far from uh, geopolitics. But uh, uh, from your point of view, uh, for what reasons were the Eurasianists, uh, you uh, like uh, 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 Gurdenis was uh, briefly arrested with the, oh, excuse me, uh, Gurdenis was oh, briefly yeah. arrested and why Yaiji was uh, uh, dismissed, for which reason, if, okay. if they are good friends of uh, the coalition. Okay. Uh, Gilden is signed a petition. Yeah, I know this, but yes. more... Uh, I mean, he was uh, detained shortly, for, yeah. for about four days, along with some 70 plus uh, mm -hmm. admirals and naval officers, then he was released. But it was a kind of a message to the United States that they're not following Blue Homeland Doctrine anymore. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, that, that was not about Gilden, okay. Jim Gilden himself, but it was a political meaning. And uh, for as for uh, Yaiji, he was he became so prominent that Hulisa Akar was not happy with him. That he was he was so high profile personality. That he, 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 I mean, that, 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 that happens in all broken systems. He did something systems. with the with the signature of the Libyan. No, he, he, he didn't sign it. Ah, no, 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 I didn't sign it. But uh, he was also a, a kind of uh, engineer of this. Uh, Yes, but he is not a Eurasianist. He, he, he supports closer ties with, with Israel, etc. So okay. he was disliked by, by the Perinche okay. group. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, okay, just a little comment. I mean, I guess uh, the word that we were looking for is asymmetrical warfare. So uh, when is this going to end? It's not going to end. That, I mean, if you have a kind of power asymmetry, that's what you do. You bug. You, you spoil the game. Actually, I think it was Hulusi Akar who said, I mean, we can spoil the game. We're not here to make a game. Mm. So they're not building a game, mm. but they can spoil it if they don't want things, uh, uh, you know, going, what, you know, the way that 
um, they want to. Um, my question uh, to you, Ilhan Hoca, uh, would be, I, I totally agree, I remember um, uh, presenting at the International Studies Association this paper on Neo-Ottomanism, Eurasianism, and Transatlanticism in 2010. And I had this whole sort of, you know, literature review of all, you know, AKP foreign policy analysis, and and I believe you were one of the exceptions. Uh, uh, your edited volume on AKP, the only sort of criticism of AKP's foreign policy, and I was one of the few ones, and probably you too. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were only like a handful, uh, handful of international relations analysts who oh, were yeah. critical of <laughs> Davutoglu. Um, 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 uh, you know, and th th there was this huge euphoria about, you know, uh, oh, this is such a new, um, 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 it's critical of Kemalism and traditional uh, um, um, uh, 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 Turkish foreign policy. Oh, um, well, Kemal uh, annexed Hatay, well, who doesn't care about that? Uh, uh, nobody cares about that, and you know, and this and that. So, and they were, they were basically saying, oh, this is a very proactive, uh, um, uh, foreign policy. Now, this idea of forward defense, however, and he says in this book, um, uh, well, I mean, in order to combat terrorism, and read that, of course, you know, Kurdish, uh, um, um, uh, uh, you know, movement, um, uh, we cannot, uh, we have to um, uh, um, sort of draw the defense line from uh, uh, across the border, basically, from Syria and Iraq, right? And this is a, a very good example of what you uh, um, 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 uh, define forward defense. Now, uh, let's assume that you know 2023 there is you know change of government and you know Erdogan is out. There's a new government, hypothetically speaking. Um, do you think there will be a change in this kind of thinking? In other words, you know now they want to actually and they need the support of the Kurds. It, uh, uh, can it be the case where we have a new concept basically saying, okay, you know what, we, we are going to solve this Kurdish issue domestically, and this is going to be our number one priority in terms of security, is going to be having peace in Turkey, and we're going to base all our security and foreign policy on that premise. In other words, it's, it's basically reversing these, you know, forward defense. Um, mechanism. Do you think there is a chance of that, or what will happen, especially with the Kurdish vote, um, if um, 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 this forward defense is continued by the security bureaucracy, because the security bureaucracy doesn't get elected, so they're going to be staying around, I believe. That's a very difficult issue that is being probably discussed by the by the uh, involved actors that how to deal with a post Erdogan security posture of Turkey. Whether a new government would allow Turkish troops still maintain its presence in northern Syria. Northern Iraq is alright. I mean they can tolerate it because there are small numbers of scattered military facilities. Mm -hmm. But Syria is critical. Mm -hmm. This is open ended issue and there is no uh, consensus on this, which is probably being discussed among the uh, related actors, whether Turkey should withdraw totally from Syria, which is the the basic logic says that because it's another country, that it, it, it there are many factors and actors that are involved that the United States does not want Turkey to, to leave the, to leave Syria. Because Russia wants Turkey to leave Syria. <laughs> uh, probably the liberal wing of CHP wants Turkey to leave Syria. The conservative wing of CHP wants Turkey to, to stay in Syria. Probably the coalition partner, the E party, the good party, wants Turkey to stay longer, to stay deeper in Syria. But this is why it's so complicated and th there is no clear-cut answer to that. Mm -hmm. It all depends on the negotiations uh, and bargainings among the actors that are uh, possibly come to power in post-Erdogan era. The state, the deep state, wants Turkey not only to control the areas that it occupies right now, but to link all these areas before Erdogan leaves power. 
steps in from power. Thank you, everyone.